So what are we going to cover in this Microsoft Access 2013 advanced title? Well, let's have a quick run through. There may be things that you're not interested in, you can skip over. There may be others that you totally know nothing about and you're looking forward to covering these. Well, we're going to start off with advanced table design and we're going to look at a few extra things like input masks or controlling how people type and enter the data in your tables. We're going to look at indexing and how that can improve querying. The potential for multiple primary keys, not just one field that is a primary key, but needing to use two or more fields. And then table analysis tools that come built in. Once we've coped with the advanced table design, we're then going to look at advanced querying. So we'll look at how to query for unique values and how you can add in parameters to make your queries much more useful. We look at IIF, which effectively is if in access and other functions of use in your querying the various join types and how you can amend them for individual queries, and then how to build your own cross-tab queries. We then look at action queries. These are queries that effectively change the data. They do something. There's an update action query. All the action queries do what they say. So update action query updates the data. Make table action query makes a new table. Append action query appends data to an existing table. And then the delete action query, it deletes data. We also have a section on the standard query language. So that's the language used by Access when building queries. And we look at the syntax that's required for a straightforward select statement. So a statement that will select some data from your database. How we can then build in linking to your select statements, filtering to your select statements. So we can use a where clause to filter out some data so we don't see all the data and then grouping within your SQL. Form design, the difference between unbound and bound objects. Navigation forms, a great built-in utility to Access 2013. How to build forms that will act as menus, and then some very clever use of forms. We do advanced reporting. We are now in the Access Advanced title, and we don't look at using the wizard at all, if possible. So you're going to create reports on your own. We're going to be able to add in grouping and sort in, create some clever summary reports that have no detail in them. They're simply summaries. And then the ability to add charts to your reports because a picture tells a thousand words. Adding in subforms and reports to your existing forms and reports, both bound and unbound subforms and reports how to add in more information to a form screen by the use of tabs and subforms, and then multiple unbound reports and forms and their capability within Microsoft Access. We then move forward onto macros. So you're going to be able to automate some tasks by creating your own macros, and then to be able to trigger those macros from form buttons or from buttons on the ribbons. We look at two special macros, such as auto keys and auto exec, they're special because of what they allow you to achieve in Microsoft Access databases. And then we finish off the macro section by actually using a little bit of VBA to add a confirmation dialog box so that you can say, are you sure you want to do this? Where an OK would obviously proceed and a cancel would stop at that point. Then we explore some of the built-in utilities and security, compact and repair, for example, database splitting and the very clever ACCD format, the ability to add in startup functions, so things that are triggered when the database starts, and then look at how you can distribute your database using Access Runtime so that people don't have to actually buy a license for Microsoft Access. They can run your database on their PC without full-blown Microsoft Access, and obviously the advantages of that and the disadvantages of that. We look at custom web apps. These are a new introduction to Microsoft Access and allow you to create online database applications. So obviously we will need to look at the prerequisites for this to work, of which there are a number, and then how to create a custom web application, how to add and edit the data that you're putting into that web application, and then how to add and edit the objects that make up that web application. And then finally, we finish off the advanced title and deal with how Access can interact with external data. So we look at how you can link in Excel data. So you can use Excel data in your Access database without having to go through importing the data. You can simply link to it. We can use Access data in Excel pivot tables. 
we can simply link the pivot table to Microsoft Access. We can use Microsoft Access data in Word Mail Merge. We simply set the Mail Merge up to use the data directly from Microsoft Access. And the final step in here is how to link through to SQL Server data tables. So let's get going.